Hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Dr. Baker. Uh, just wanted to follow up on our conversation that we had on May 7th regarding our Rapid Miner churn project. Uh, in this quick video here, I wanted to show you exactly how we were uh, able to do some visual data exploration of a single numerical predictor on churn. So personally, by the way, I, I prefer to do this type of data exploration in Excel or other software that maybe you're comfortable with, but Excel is easy enough. I think it's a little more clunky actually in Rapid Miner, but you can do it. So uh, let me show you how it's done. So first, I just want you to appreciate that what we're looking at here is the raw imported uh, process file that I shared with you for your project. Um, there's only a few small modifications I made uh, to do this uh, example. And it's right here, this new set role and this new multiply. That's all we've added. Everything else is exactly the same. So we're going to read in our calibration Excel file here. We're going to use this multiply operator to split the data file. So it's going to still do all the old stuff. And in fact, we're not really going to touch any of this stuff at all. I just didn't want to mess with it. So I'm, I'm splitting that data file. And I had to add this thing called the set role operator. And the reason I'm doing that here is I needed to take the dv churn dep uh, variable, which is normally set as a special role of label in Rapid Miner. Remember, we call a label basically means it's the dependent variable. And to utilize it in this data visualization, we actually want to convert it to a regular variable here. Okay. So really, the only thing I'm doing is changing that variable um, as it is. And I also added a breakpoint after right here. And so it's just going to stop. And once it runs all the way through, if we had done it, I just don't want to bother running all the additional stuff. It's just not relevant for this example. Here we will see how to do the data exploration. So let's just run this. Oops, I got to start back from the beginning here. OK, there we go. So it's reading in the file. It'll push that file up to here. It'll change the role, and then we'll proceed with the actual tutorial. OK, so we've created the data file, and we changed that set role. So just to show you what I mean there, notice here for the dv churn dep variable, now it's just uh, colored white. doesn't have that special coloration to identify it as a dependent variable anymore. And what we're going to do here is now that we have this uh, data file, we're going to go to not statistics, which we're used to using to look at simple summary statistics. We're actually going to go to visualizations. And I'll start from scratch here so we can build it up. OK. So now that we're here at our blank uh, menu, we're going to try to make a chart that, uh, let's see, for the number of active subscriptions uh, that someone has. Most people have one active subscription. But we want to see if the churn rate sort of varies across these number of active subscriptions. So. Our plot type will be a uh, bar chart here, column bar chart. We're going to want to group it into two groups, our G DV churn depth here. And we're going to want to stack these to 100%. My little handy dandy note here. We're going to want to aggregate this. Our value column here is going to be customer. So what have we done thus far? OK, so just, just basically follow along with this part here. All, we, all we've done is we have made that our y-axis goes from 0 to 100%. That's by virtue of the stack to 100%. We've grouped it into the two groups by dv churned up here. 1 means they churn, 0 they haven't. And if you hover over this green one, we have 19,585 people who didn't churn, 50.2%. And we have 19,415 uh, who did churn, or 49.8%. So my real goal here is I just want to take this simple stacked bar and I want to split it into groups along the x-axis for the predictor that I'm interested in. And we do that by uh, messing with this group variable here. So let's start off with an easy illustration. We'll just do active subscription. So on the x-axis now, we'll start putting all, we'll create these bar charts for people in different number of active subscriptions. So sure enough, uh, most people only have one active subscription for their cell phone plan. You can see here there was a, uh, 
13,585 who didn't churn and 13,942 who did. We actually have some people with zero active subscriptions. That's strange, right? Maybe these are like delinquent customers or customers who are still technically customers, but their account for some reason has been paused. Maybe they're sick or ill or, or whatever it might be, or lapsed in some way. And we have quite a few people who also have two accounts, right? We have 4,000 who did churn, 40, uh, 4,900, and 4,600 who didn't, some with three, but notice we already have just 700 and 730, 175, and 154 for four. For our purposes here, though, we need to keep in the back of our minds that as there's just fewer and fewer customers who have a low number of active or have a high number of active subscriptions, most are around one, two, or three. But we can see there's a bit of a trend here, right? The rate of churn seems to vary between one to four. There's a small difference here. Maybe that difference is meaningful. So that might suggest to me I would like to create um, bins that group maybe customers who have exactly one versus customers who have two and customers who have three and four. So that might give me some idea where to set my cut points based on sort of aggregating and grouping these, these lines here. Now, don't get too excited when you look over here on the far right side, uh, six active subscriptions, seven, eight, nine, and 10. It might look like there's a big variation in the number of people who churn and didn't churn. But in reality, that's just an expression of the fact there's very few people at all. So for example, there's only three customers in our entire data set, according to this little pop-up menu, who have seven active subscriptions, big family, maybe a small business. And that doesn't really tell us much small sample size. And similarly, we have exactly one customer who has 53 active subscriptions uh, on, their, on their account. This must be a small business customer. So this one's easy enough to look at. Let's take a look at one that might be a little more complex and show you both the advantages and challenges associated with this type of data exploration. Um, let's vary this by number of equipment days. <sighs> Make sure you spell your things right there, folks. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Oh, typos. So again, holy moly, this is a wild looking chart. And this is the number of equipment days that someone's had their phone. Again, let's not get too fixated on this crazy sort of scattered green and blue lines. We have very few people who've owned phones for this many days. So we're going to see a lot of bouncing around of these stacked bars here. But if we look right here, you kind of you kind of blur your eyes a little bit. You can see a bit of a trend, right? Right around I don't know, 100 to 130 days, there seems to be a little bounce in the churn rate. And then sure enough, right around here, around 300 to 363 days, we see a bounce in the churn rate for equipment days. Of course, we have to make that decision of, is this really reflective of how old your phone equipment is, or is this really just another expression of most people get new phones the same day they sign up for a contract, so equipment days is really just correlated with months they've been a customer, right? But the point here is, uh, ignoring that important issue for a moment, we can totally see that it suggests that if we were to use equipment days as a predictor of churn, there's some clear marks where we might create cut points for our categorical groupings to... Um, build put those into our prediction model as a categorical variable and clearly the relationship isn't strictly just linear right there's some sort of dis distinctive bounce here right at a certain number of days okay so that wraps up this quick tutorial um didn't go into a lot of great detail but it does give you one way to visually explore your uh predictor your continuous predictors there within rapid miner